ambi- there's the ambivalence of your of your life and career there that you, you never seem totally satisfied. Yeah, with. that's with everything in life. <laughs> yeah. I'm not satisfied how I drank half a bottle of that water. I probably should have held a bottle a little differently or something. I don't know, swallow. I should have done a better job at swallowing the water. Um, that's me every second of the day. It's awful. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. <laughs> I want, to, I want to see the, the being Adam Resnick movie, the, the being John Malkovich version oh. of you. Yeah, that would be, to, get, to be inside your head yeah, would be uh, a trip. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> it'll, probably, it'll, probably, it'll be the next Cabin Boy, I guess, <laughs> or something like that. You know, I, I attended a screening of Cabin Boy, 92 White Tribeca, the dearly departed 92 White Tribeca. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, you that's you and Chris uh, hosted the screening, and you were talking in the Q&A about, I didn't realize how damaging on your psyche the fallout from that movie yeah, was. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I mean, basically, the two of you decided never to work together again after that movie because of how badly it turned yeah, out. Not, not because we we still remained, you know, like best friends. Right. But there, it wasn't that we decided. We were told, you know, basically <laughs> everyone, you know, you know, we never want to see you guys doing anything together again. And Chris and I always had this fantasy where we would just meet all the studio and network heads and say, uh, "Look, just give us each ten million dollars." and we will never darken your doorsteps again. We will go back east, and you'll, we'll never pitch, ask, or anything. I just, we'll get out of your hair, you'll never see us, but, you know, no such deal, whatever, you know, materialized. Because they can do that for free, you understand? They don't have to give us uh, $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's got to take $4 million. <laughs> <laughs> Dad feels it's necessary to just chime in occasionally. Sure. Well, we wanted to start at 10, because we figured, you know, they'd knock us down. Right, be negotiation. So if we... <laughs> Each end and up with like 25 grand, that would be great. <laughs> Cab fare home, yeah. It's good that we're getting some of these stories about your professional career out because in the memoir, comedy nerds will be disappointed. This is not a memoir about your comedy writing career. Yeah. You're not going to find uh, the undoubtedly fascinating story about how Spewey got his name. <laughs> That's not going to be in here, but in every other sense, you'll be thoroughly satisfied uh, with this collection of oddly heartwarming stories. I would say. There's yeah, people have a mix. Yeah, some people uh, get the sense of that. Other people um, just find it funny. I don't know. Some people are, don't like the language. It's, I don't know. But it's, it's real life. Like it's it. a memoir. This isn't some, uh, you know, uh, Fry, James Fry shit. This is like the no, real no, life, was, the real yeah, deal. Yeah, right, right, right. Is that how you said the guy's name? Who he's cares? the guy that what got a... Uh, million little Yeah, yeah, pieces. he said he got a root canal without Novocaine or something. Yeah. <laughs> how dare he? Yeah, I mean, he should have thought that one through. It's an easy thing just not to put it in. I, I just love uh, your writing style. I think you have some incredible uh, turns of phrase. I just want to read a, uh, a brief paragraph and then I want to have you if possible, read a passage. Okay. Uh, this is from a story about your, your old high school teacher, Mr. Ulsh. Ulsh, actually. Ulsh, sorry. Uh, uh, there's no pronunciation guide in the glass. Uh, just anything, as long all my teachers had very, you know, Germanic sounding. Yeah. So there's always Pennsylvania Dutch, Dutch country. Kind of, you know. So this is, uh, <laughs> I, I never stood a chance against the age-old forces of nature set upon earth to crush the wills of ten-year-old boys. The world was ruled by Mr. Ulsh's, and his resume had been pre-approved. Adult, teacher, draft dodger. A man who drove a flashy sports car while other people were starving. Who bounced cute little girls on his lap while ignoring the plain ones. A vulgar human being who pissed all over the birthday of God's only son by callously assigning a gratuitous book report. The devil and his angels had been in Ulsh's corner all along, enabling him to enter my head like a flotilla of squirming microbes that were slowly turning my brain into vinegar. A flotilla of squirming microbes. I mean, do these just flow out of you? These, these phrases, or is a lot of like yeah, tweaking and editing there? Yeah, I don't know. I just have to sleep. Whatever. 